Tonight on Noir. We meet LaSort's pride and joy. Former Navy SEAL Dom Rosso tries to bring LaSort back to the tactical side. I review the Kunin 357, and stage eight of the challenge forces me back into the woods. Thank you for joining us on another episode of Noir. So what's, what, you got, what you got in store for us today, Mr. Man? Well, you know, one of the things that's been happening lately, there have been some self-defense shootings that are out there, you know, and so we talked to friends, and friends mentioned, like, you know, why aren't these people being shot in the legs? You know, if, they're, if they need to be shot, why not in the legs? And you and I have talked about this yeah. in the past, and you had a really good story as to explaining to people why that's just not really the smart thing to do. Yeah, I think, um, <laughs> well, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, to us, because, you know, we're, we kind of have a better understanding of it, but I think for a lot of people um, who don't know much about guns, their only exposure is what they see in movies. Yeah. And in movies, we all know the rules. No one ever misses. <laughs> no one ever runs out of bullets. Right. No reloads. And yeah. when you shoot people, they fly back 110 feet. Right. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, in reality, hitting a moving target is really hard. Right. Yeah. But I think what, what happens is your, your, your focus is, boom, the threat. That's what you're looking at. Yeah. And so instinctively, I'm like, oh, let's stop it. it I think it's unrealistic to expect people to be able to, to kind of decipher in the, in the heat of the moment Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for that right leg there. Right. I'm gonna go for it. Right well, leg and there. I think too. Okay, so what if the person that you shoot in the leg still has a gun? Okay, what's going on here? You're trying to stop the threat. Yeah. Does injuring a person's leg immediately stop that threat? No, because mm -hmm. their hands and arms still work. Yeah. So it is something that just people need to realize just isn't realistic. And I think some a part of it too is people not wanting to deal with the idea of killing someone. That's true. I think it's, that's it's hard. That's point. something that 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 takes a lot to deal with yep. because. When you really take it to that next step and you're like, the idea of having to take a life can be overwhelming for some people. Well, I would and say the like, majority of people have never been faced with that situation. Exactly. And because of that, they have no idea what they would be feeling right at that moment. They have no idea how, if they were in that situation, if I it don't. was, yeah. But, but I want the options. Right. right. And but someone who has dealt with that situation many, many times, our guest this week. Uh. <laughs> Yes. So yes. he knows all about center mass yeah, and does. not necessarily shooting for the legs. I yeah, think. and I want to see what happened to you uh, this week. Yeah, I don't know if you really do, but we'll see. Dude, the shooting that we're doing on the show, this athletic shooting, it's, it's driving me crazy. I'm not doing any of the stuff that I've trained for two decades to do, like scan after you get done shooting, tactical reload, shooting from cover and concealment, doing speed reload, transitioning from rifle to handgun. I just feel like I'm, I'm gonna be in trouble if I get in a fight. Get in a fight, get in a fight, get in a fight, get in a fight. Let's go. All right, um, so what are we gonna do? Concealed. Do some concealed so we're stuff. Work off concealed, and that's what's happening to me right now. Is the athletic shooter with Amy and, and Coleone and Katie is that it's kind of eroding a little bit. What I want to do is have you hit the pads, right? Build up your heart rate, a yep. little bit of an adrenaline dump, you know, 30 second hooks on the pads, yep. and then move right into a concealable draw. 45 seconds, threat. I'm gonna move out of the way, strip the gloves, go into the draw, two to the midsection, yep. one to the head. Okay. All right. Woo! Stand your ground. Okay. Ready? Go. All right. Move, move, breathe. Breathe, breathe. Harder. If you're here to fight for your life, come on. Let's go, let's go, let's go. This is what happens before a fight. This is how you're gonna feel. Let's go. Harder, faster. Move. Think about what's behind me. Think about what's happening next. Three. Stretch, uh, go into the draw, stand your ground. <sighs> scan, Woo. scan. Scan like I don't normally do. Pick your secondary targets. There you go, top off your gun. Don't cross your legs. This isn't ballet. Go ahead, think about what's next, what's after, who's coming, who's showing up. Get the gun put away, good to go. How's that? <laughs> it's not exactly what we do on the freestyle field. Breathe. Think about what's going on. Harder, more power. Let's go. Threat. Hand. Threat. Sprint. Get that cover. And I got a reload. Work it out. Think about what's up. 
And now another one. Oh, Get that gun up. Oh. Okay. Good hits. So, Coleone, this is what happens when you do left-handed malfunction clearances with Dom. So as I draw up here, I, I bury my chin into my arm. Right. So now I've got something. I actually have a little cover here. I'm protecting my CNS. And that's and something also, somebody doesn't want to close in on. No, because this sucks. Yeah. All right. Throw it out. Your right arm's down. Your right arm's down. Uh, got to get my hits. There you go. <laughs> Dude, I forgot how this is so good. <laughs> it's not unrealistic to think that we're on a static range, but if your gun starts malfunctioning, right. you know, we don't have any cover here. Yeah. We're in an open field. Right. So a lot of the times I tell people, I'm like, all right, is it worth dropping to a knee or going to the prone? That's something you have to right. figure out in the fight. Press check. Okay. Something you guys probably aren't doing. Um, no. A lot of guys will go click in a CQB scenario right. and go, oh, what happened to my gun? I don't give a f <laughs> right. what happened to my gun right. in a CQ situation. <laughs> I'm going click getting that thing out of my way and get my other pistol yeah. out. Nice, good clearing. Ah, this is this is life right here. I love this, man. I could do this all day, every day. Contact left. Oh, that was fun, man. That was fun. This uh, really showed me what I missed and what I've been missing. But I got to run to... Uh, Dallas for a meeting, buddy. I'm gonna leave you back out here to continue to train. It's nice work, brother. Obviously, yeah. awesome seeing you. Absolutely, man. awesome. Seeing Keep you. it up. Keep the reps going, and uh, don't let Noir get to you, man. No, don't I know. Let Noir That's get what I need to, you. to avoid, man. But this was my home. This is where I need to be, man. This is awesome. I've forgotten about how great it is. This is where I'm supposed to be. The Kunin 357 Magnum 1911 is one of those guns that you just can't help but make the bang, bang sound each time you pull the trigger. Because clearly, the fireball this thing creates isn't enough theatrics and drama for you. This gun simply commands an unbridled level of respect. From a distance, it looks like a regular old 1911. But when you feel it in your hands, you realize you're holding something special. It's bigger and a bit meaner than your average 1911. Like if you shot it into the sky, it would create another hole in the ozone layer. There's a certain crude refinement about this gun. Picture Mike Tyson playing the violin. For such a brawlic presentation, the trigger is incredibly precise and deliberate. The only thing stopping you from shooting this gun fast is the cartilage in your wrist. Sure, it shoots a lot softer than a 357 Magnum revolver, but make no mistake, the likelihood of developing arthritis increases with each pull of the trigger. Initially, your heart's gonna wanna put this gun in the novelty box, but don't let it. This isn't some oversized show-off toy you bring out to get a million views on YouTube when your gun recoils and knocks you on your ass. This is a viable platform in my mind. I run and gun with this gun the same way I can with the Glock 19. It may not be as agile or as practical as a Glock 19, but this is no safe queen. This gun was built to be shot, even if it feels like it's trying to destroy itself every time you shoot it. The drama and controlled chaos of this gun gives you a wow novelty factor, but it still has the ability to be a shootable, boringly reliable gun. I always say the M&P 1522 is the most fun I've ever experienced shooting a gun. And now, I can easily say, the Kunin 357 Magnum is a close second.
On the way home from the badass defensive shooting with Dom, I started thinking about athletic shooting again. Why the hell am I doing it? I'm not an athletic shooter. I'm a fighter, a tactician, a shooter, period. I don't play games with guns, I train with guns. But then I caught an open, straight stretch of road and laid out like a runway, and my right foot instinctively hammered its favorite pedal. The speedometer needle looked like Coleone's heart rate monitor when he walks into a sneaker store the day of a new release. Why was I driving like this? In the city, I drive to survive, glancing both ways through an intersection even on a green, watching other drivers' hands to predict their next insane move as I pass by. The list goes on. Was there a purpose? Was I training to be a better defensive driver? Or is there something deep inside me activated by a fast car and an open road? I've been lying to myself all these years. I'm not a tactician, I'm a competitor, a rush junkie, an athlete. Coleone, I'm back. Oh, that did not hit. Nope. Okay, well, something, something is definitely wrong. Adventure breeds character and the path should be less traveled. Independence breeds survival, and you must depend on who you know you are. Your inspiration drives you to never waste a moment. As a pioneer, an advocate, a gun owner, it's time to celebrate your lifestyle every single day. Okay, okay, clearly another tongue-in-cheek moment on the Noir Show. <laughs> I think everyone can appreciate that. That I want to know parts of. <laughs> you didn't want any part of that boxing glove exhibition, shooting from attention. I, 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 I'm not gonna lie, I was a little jealous. I felt a little left out there. <laughs> because on some regards, you actually do also appreciate the tactical side of shooting. Anybody who doesn't know that is a fool. Right. <laughs> like, well, I think, just, I think there like, might be people, some people that miss that. You know, after episode nine, we took a little heat for you yeah. hollering at Katie for so long. <laughs> and he is, yeah, he's one of my best buds. He does not <laughs> yell at me in real life. <laughs> not yet, at least. <laughs> <laughs> no. yeah, I will crazy. say, I actually do shoot that way, though. The but, way I was shooting while he was being yep. Mr. Yes. Tactical, I, yeah, that's... You, that, but that's, that's, that's a part of you, but yeah. if you decide to go take a defensive class, you're going to be a serious student. Absolutely. You're going to shoot. You're going to learn from Dom like I did there. I mean, I, it's been a long time since I had that kind of crazy adrenaline mm -hmm. rush where he was making me hit his gloves, and he's like, harder, harder, <laughs> breathe, harder, harder. I mean, I was completely exhausted by the time I tried to get those gloves off, which was cool because it was kind of like trying to fight somebody's hand hold off mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. and then draw from retention and shoot. It was bad. I mean, I loved it. It's I, like, it gets me going. It's like Katie. Katie p could appreciate this analogy. I look at it the same way as like when I played organized basketball and then street ball. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, street ball is just basketball for the sake of basketball. Yeah. Like right. you just, it's a totally different way of playing. You, you take some of these, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You take some of these NBA players and you watch how they play in a game and then take them to, to Rucker Park and watch how they play Rucker Park. Totally different. Well, but, I'm um, interested to see if these uh, tactical skills help you out in the next round of the competition. Okay, yeah. Yes, so Katie, why don't you tell everybody where we're at right now? Okay, so after running stage seven, Coleon is at five minutes and six seconds, and Lasort is running at four minutes and 22 seconds. Awesome. Y'all ready to see the next yeah. stage? If I don't win this stage, I'm gonna blame it on Dom. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> ah. This is a 12-hit triangle layout shot entirely with the Mossberg MVP bolt-action rifle. After three hits at the 50, they'll run to the 90-yard berm for three more. The next station is still from 90 yards, this time from the wooded area, where the shooters might look to employ a tree rest. Finally, it's a 40-yard forward dash back to the original station for three last hits from the 50-yard line. Two, 
one. All right, Coleon, so you had an interesting last stage. Darren's gonna start off. Mm -hmm. He's right on it, I get it. I wanna talk a little bit about in this stage, I noticed y'all run completely different when you're running with your rifles. And I know there's cases for both. You run muzzle down and your yeah. friends muzzle up. So talk to me a little bit about the difference when he climbs up on this berm to shoot. It's just a natural thing. I, I just naturally have always run muzzle down. I don't even, I couldn't even explain to you why. Right, it's just your instinct is to run muzzle down. Gotcha. Absolutely. All right. Well, and I don't know, I just felt, I always felt it awkward to run muzzle up. I felt like I was like in a bad 80s movie. Right. I feel like it would be a little bit harder to control when I moved with y'all the other day when and when Lasort had me working a little bit on moving. I went naturally muzzle down as well. But I know he's tactically very uh, advanced, I guess you could say. That did not hit. Nope. Okay, well, something, something is definitely wrong. Clear. Boarded. Left side, left side, left yep. side. Oh, where are we? Why? He's. Oh, he's oh yeah, he sure is. That's got to that's gotta feel good. He's supposed to be the boat gun guy. Ooh. I think this is where you're going to catch up. Like I said, I feel like every time that you've gone behind him is when you really perform well because you're an athletic, competitive minded person. See what you got to beat, and you can go out and beat it. I, I would have to agree with that. I don't want to, but yeah. Yeah. The fact that I'm behind in and of itself is bothering me. All right, let's sort. I got you running at 74.47. 74.47. This is your chance to make up don't, some time. Don't, don't patronize me, We're man. Ready, We're clear this out. See what you got. All right, let's sort. Come sure on that, over here. I was sure something happened to the scope when I was in those trees. I'm like. Those are good shots. What's you the guy who's supposed to be like, I just can't even count the number of times I've been in the woods. You get in the woods and you start freaking out. <laughs> I was out. scared. I ran that way, then I ran this way, and I was like, tell him where, tell me where to be. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Lasorda, as we watch Coleon get started, yep. um, we, we highlighted as you were running the course that um, he likes to run when he's moving with his rifle muzzle down. Right. Explain, you go muzzle up. Now, from your tactical background, is that something you were taught? Is it just your instinct? What's your preference and why do you do it that way? Well, it's, and it's a good question. It's my training. Um, you know, just my instructors always kind of thought muzzle up was the safe and best way to go. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it's one of those things that's debatable. You can right. go either way with it. Um, and, and they're both considered gun safe. Yes, right. I, I, they should be. Right. I mean, there are some people who are very, very vehement about muzzle down is the only safe way to go. And, um, and, and he's shooting well, like I figured he would. Um, he did the same thing I did, though. Maybe he got lost in the... Nope, he didn't get lost in the trees. Um, so it, it really is a matter of personal preference. I just think muzzle up is a better way to go. You I think can, you can move faster. You can tell your difference in too. The way you go muzzle up, muzzle down, and then on the burn, you go prone, right. he stands up. Well, so and I think he's just showing off. Right. I think you might just... <laughs> just so he can stand up and hit it from there, right? right. No, I think... Because, I mean, prone is just such a more stable position. Mm -hmm. Now, honestly, you can probably work a bolt a little bit quicker um, when you're standing, so okay. that might have been why he was doing that. And he has one. Oh, he had to go to a mag change. Dang. Oh, he was shooting so well, but that was actually a quick mag change. He seems to be working the bolt better too. Yeah. This time. And then he had. Oh. Oh man. Oh, he's gonna be mad after yeah, this. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. He gets his hit. He is so calming he, down though. He's yes. Cal he's calming he is, down in between. But he had such a clean run going there. He mm -hmm. just got to the last round. Oh. That hurt my soul. All right, Colleen, I got you running uh, 89.17. Katie, I always love getting another female's perspective, and you were up close and personal throughout this entire competition, so what was your takeaway from this? You know, it's been cool. Each stage has kind of pointed out some big differences right. between Coleon and Lasort. So, Coleon, I'm curious. I got to hear Lasort's perspective on why he chooses to go prone on the berm. Mm -hmm. Why is it when you go on the berm you like to stand <laughs> up? Because I'm a show-off. Okay, fair or, enough, because he's a show-off. Or a butterfly. No, I'm dead. There serious. was no reason. I have no rhyme or reason for why.
I go and stand at the top of the building. It looks yeah, really felt, cool. Like, laying down one day, I'm sure he it would do that like too. It looked like heroic and like, like that would be a statue. <laughs> like in a thousand years, there'd be a statue of Coleo Noir on top of a hill shooting a bolt action rifle. You never know. Part when of it is, but, part of it is the butterfly too, because it's like, how often you get to say, yeah, I stood on top of a burn during a yeah. shooting competition yeah. and yeah. shot from yeah. standing on top of it. So I got lost in the forest. Yeah. I got lost in the trees. He was yeah. running so circles. Yeah. I hope you guys saw that and paid attention. Yeah. And this, is the same, the this is the same guy trees. who likes to make fun of me because I've never been in the yeah. woods yet. He still didn't know us. <laughs> he put you, yeah, yeah. Coleon My old eyes failed me, yes. And then, so you had the mag change, which got you. I mean, that yeah. was, because after you did the mag change, because that did surprise you, I think you had I'm, one hit left. I'm gonna tell you what you happened. had like three misses right after that, I think. Here's what happened. Working a bolt gun is like dealing with the siren. Because it's, it, it starts to become intoxicating after a while. So I just became obsessed with just working the bolt. I wasn't paying attention to anything else. Like literally, you I was just like. I've heard you say that yeah. before. You've literally said to me before when I've been on the range with you, man, working that bolt is so fun. It's fun. It is. I got. I, I think he forgot he was in a competition. <laughs> and that is why I like the Mossberg patrol rifle so much is because it's a small, compact, mm. bolt action gun that is just a ton of fun to mm -hmm. shoot. It's fun to it's watch cool. too. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Don't get me wrong though. I'm still a man of instant gratification. I know. So when the time comes. Semi auto, baby. Your Daniel defense is always going to be somewhere <laughs> within about 10 feet of you. I know, even if you have a bolt action in your hands. Oh, much. man. Well, Katie, we just uh, thank you for sharing that with us, Absolutely. first off. But where are we with the time right now? Okay, so right now there is about a minute's difference. Lasort is still in the lead. So you guys tune in next week and see if Coleon makes his big comeback. Next week on Noir. It wasn't that he was going down, so. Look at that. Damn, he got him quick. <laughs> oh, yeah. Whoa. That is a big Ooh. man running right there. Four.